Welcome to this Leadership 101 module as part of this online training, and I hope that you find it valuable and helpful. One of the things about leadership is it's really subjective, so it's personal to you, the type of leader you want to become. So as, you walk, as we walk through this content together, I'd love you to have a think about the type of leader that you want to be. We have experienced leaders that we don't want to be, but choosing instead who we do want to become as a leader, whether that's to ourselves and how we lead ourselves, but also then eventually how we might want to choose to lead others is going to be so important to get right at the start and as you're already potentially doing that as well. So we're going to talk about a couple of things. I have two ways of sharing this. One is I'm actually going to show the Microsoft leadership principles because I think they're very simple, but very tactical. And I hope that you get a lot of value from this as well. Then I'm going to go into a really simple model that scales uh, to managing other people, but also managing yourself. And I hope to include some questions along the way that are going to make this tactical and a little bit more applicable for you to be able to think about your leadership how you lead yourself and potentially other people today. So the three Microsoft leadership principles are generate energy, create clarity and deliver success. And again, when you think about leadership, I think that these are very foundational, but they're unbelievably powerful and important. So we generate energy. This is how you generate energy for yourself, but also for a team or people around you, whether that's for you or your clients or if you manage other personal trainers or you have a couple of gyms, whatever that looks like for you, generating energy is a superpower and it's learnable. Energy is, there's a couple of ways of creating it. One is having this vision of the future that connects to your own and other people's motivation and inspiration. So if you have a vision that other people are drawn towards and you've connected what they want and are motivated and inspired by, to achieve that vision of the future, you literally will create and generate so much energy. And this does not have to be direct team members. It can be your clients. It can be the people that surround yourself around your brand and that want to be part of whatever it is that you want to create, this vision of the future. But energy is also this balance between stress or challenge and recovery. When you get that right, you will create the right amount of energy or flow, which is the Mihai Csikszentmihalyi version of exactly this kind of piece around energy. It's that kind of flow state that's unbelievably energizing, but it's based on getting the challenge and the recovery or the skill level to match it right. When you balance those two things, you will be energized longer term rather than in short bursts of using energy. So stress comes from the challenge of achieving your vision of success. And recovery is, again, that kind of downtime along that long-term path to achieving the vision. So that's how you generate energy. With clarity, it's the importance of it is to avoid duplication. If we're going in three directions because we don't know what we want, well, then everybody's going to be working on different versions of the goal rather than getting clear on the goal. So everybody is working in the same direction, rowing the boat in the same direction as a team. And that makes such a difference. It'll funnel direction in that one way, and that will improve the direction and the momentum that you're going to achieve as well. And that comes from, again, taking it back a step, getting really clear on this vision of what you want to achieve and the values, which is how you're going to achieve it or the, the ways of being together that you're going to demonstrate along the way. You also then, it necessitates, this is such a necessity, if you have this kind of vision and you want to be able to communicate it, you must be able to communicate it clearly so that there's less confusion and then that they can use that information to guide decisions. And clarity starts with the leader. Why you're doing what you're doing, what you're aiming for, and how you're going to achieve that. What are the behaviors and ways of being along the way? And that means then that that's foundational to delivering success. So delivering success is based on that kind of closeness to vision. So you come up with what the measure of success is, you align your values along the way, and you chunk that down with achievable and kind of short-term goals. So you work through that process and you deliver success. It's also along that journey based on this openness to feedback so that you know, oh, we're off track, on track, off track, on track, and you take that feedback along the way so that you achieve that success. And success isn't just the delivery because you could car crash along the way, ruin people's careers, ruin people's days, and not be 
the leader or demonstrating the behaviors of the type of leader that you want to become. So again, how you deliver success is just as important as what you deliver. And that's so important to underline. So those are the three Microsoft leadership principles that I wanted to share in this kind of leadership overview at the start. And I hope that they're useful to kind of hold in your mind as what type of leader you want to become and how you might kind of demonstrate that or some things to pay attention to. But the other thing, again, and this scales from an individual to a team, is a really simple model. It's from the Harvard Business Review. There's an article. If people want the link, let me know. And it's really around four things. Know me, value me, focus me, inspire me. When you get the balance of these four things right for yourself and or you can do it for other people, it's unbelievably powerful to help you in your leadership. So with know me, this is really around self-awareness. How well do you know yourself? And again, when you think about scaling this to leading others, you then know other people individually. That's going to develop the relationship and help you be able to lead them forward in a much more powerful way. So knowing yourself, the self-awareness is really around who are you at your best? What are your strengths? Who are you at your worst? So again, that kind of spectrum of who you are. What character traits do you have that serve you and the vision of the future you're working towards? And what doesn't serve you? So what about you doesn't serve where you're trying to go? And how can you limit and reduce that? So these questions are meant to prompt reflection for yourself. What gives you energy? What takes it away? Really simple energy audit. What gives you energy? What takes it away? Fill that out. Do more of what gives you energy. Do less of what takes it away or spend time with the people that take away your energy. Less is going to make a massive difference to your energy. You can use this as a really simple tool to be able to help you move forward again and lead yourself and other people. But also what's important to you and what isn't? Because when you say yes to, let's say, a vision of the future, give yourself permission to say no to stuff that doesn't serve that vision or is not that vision. We cannot do everything. You can do anything, but you can't do everything. So getting really clear on what you want removes what you don't want. So again, what do you want to achieve? And the other part about self-awareness is like tuning back into who you are and what you're feeling at the moment. So noticing the feelings that are triggered from interacting with other people, maybe it's frustration and stress along the way to achieving your vision, being able to tune into that and managing those feelings is a superpower. It's very easily learned. Please, again, send us a message. We can help you with this. But also, if you don't understand the impact that those negative or detrimental feelings might have to your performance and the performance of others, that's leadership, is tuning into that, managing them effectively, and reducing the impact of the negative emotions. But then also, leading yourself, developing your self-awareness is also based on whether you build yourself up or you just focus on what doubts you have and what would pull you back and hold you back. So focus on building yourself up, on leading yourself with reinforcing good and removing that kind of story or negative feedback that you give yourself and potentially dwell on. So that's the first of the four. No, no me. You can, again, use this for other people. Use these same questions to get to know your team or the people in your team. Imagine this as a conversation as a team. It's so powerful. Next is focus me. So we'll stay on the left for a second. On the right are just kind of a couple of tools to help you focus and prioritize. So focusing is really around the values. So if our value is honesty and we don't focus on living that, well, then we're not going to be uh, kind of leading ourselves in the way that we want to. So again, it's back to what do you want to achieve? Clarity of that vision of the future you want to achieve. What are you okay if you don't achieve? Again, what are you saying no to because you're saying yes to something else? We're using the Eisenhower matrix here with what's important versus urgent, but also what's the biggest impact tasks? We spend way too much time on low impact, urgent tasks. Not useful. And if you want to lead yourself, you must carve out time on the not urgent, but important tasks. The other way to help you focus and pay attention to focusing yourself and other people is what can you do to keep focused and remove distractions? Again, we're trying to dial up the positive side, focus, leading, knowing yourself, 
generating energy, creating clarity, delivering success, and removing the things that take you away from being able to achieve that vision of the future. So that can be focusing yourself, but removing distractions. What are they? It's typically your phone, typically other people that want to do less, typically things that just don't serve your vision of the future. And then focus also means scheduling time. So creating order in the chaos of your week. Typically, we will default to chaos. What you want is more certainty or more scheduled time to block and act on act, uh, tasks or priorities that are going to move you towards that vision of the future. Value. So this is doing what you said you would do. So valuing yourself is doing what you said you would do. I'll explain why. But also valuing other people by helping them do what they said they'd do. When you commit and follow through to what you said you would do, you build your own self-confidence because this is really self-esteem and self-confidence is the relationship you have with yourself. And every other relationship will stem from the one that you have with yourself. And you cannot lead others if you cannot lead yourself. And so you must focus on building the strong relationship with yourself. You do that by closing the gap between what you say and what you will do. This increases trust because that's tight which is confidence and self-esteem. When you do this consistently over time, you will build unstoppable confidence. I promise you that. The next is inspire. So inspire you, but also for the team. So this is where you choose a challenging goal, vision, or purpose. So what inspires you? Again, use these questions as reflection. Sit with them. What inspires you? What lights you up? What dims your light? What holds you back? What difference do you want to make in your own life, the lives of other people around you, and maybe the world eventually? What problem do you want to solve for yourself and other people? Who inspires you? Again, we can get so much inspiration from spending time with other people. And what about those people inspires you? When you get clear on that, you're able to tap into that for yourself and potentially role model or adopt those character traits and behaviors for yourself. So again, hopefully that's interesting. We've talked about the three Microsoft leadership principles, generate energy, create clarity, deliver success. And we've talked about this really simple model that scales the teams as well. Know me, value me, focus me, and inspire me. So this is based on a couple of kind of things that are researched to be able to kind of form this module. Really, these are another couple of things to think about as a leader. You want that vision of the future. You want to be able to communicate it. You want to adapt along the way and be able to manage changing circumstances. When you create a plan, life will shit on you. You must be prepared to adapt to that plan. Generating energy to keep you moving forward is leadership. Creating clarity of where you're going in the midst of really difficult circumstances is leadership. So the adaptability that you must demonstrate will equip other people to do the same or role model that for other people. Emotional intelligence, again, we spoke about, which is where you kind of manage your own and eventually you'll be able to then help other people manage their own emotions as well. Integrity is back to doing what you said you would do and then doing that for yourself to build integrity with yourself, but also being able to do that for other people. Confidence, it says about making decisions and being confident in that decision. I actually think confidence is knowing you'll handle whatever happens because you've done it in the past. That's, I think, confidence and doing what you said you would do. And then resilience is this ability to bounce back and say, from setbacks, I either win or I learn. I'm going to learn from this situation and be able to persevere and stay committed and strong and generate energy towards that vision of the future. And then last but least, here's a couple of questions to leave you with. What kind of leader do you want to become? What kind of traits or descriptions of that do you want to kind of list out for yourself so that you can then Start embodying that for yourself. What will you demonstrate? What will you do to demonstrate this today if you have an opportunity to this week or this month? And then also just think about the community or the uh, uh, peer network you surround yourself with. Who can you surround yourself with so that you can learn how to become a better leader or the behaviors of the leader that you want to become? Hopefully helpful. Hopefully you enjoyed that. This Leadership 101. And I wish you an amazing day and week ahead. Thank you for watching. Speak soon.